inside of me Let it
sing, I search. Ooh, I search the world. But he couldn't feel me. Man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough. Only you came along. And you put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied.
Hello there, church family. This is Pastor Eric from Whitehorse. So grateful for the opportunity that we have to stay connected through this online stream service. I wanted to jump online here and remind you of a few ways that we can stay connected through the our, our stream services. The first one is you can always email your testimony, email your pictures, or you can even text them and use the links that we're displaying here on the screen below. And also using your social media channels. Use the hashtag WHEC Stay Connected. We'll display it here at the screen. Um, and that is a great way for you to post a picture. May we write out a quick testimony on your Facebook wall, send in a comment through YouTube, whatever way you're connecting with us, we want to hear your testimony. So make sure that you like, make sure that you share, make sure that you comment, tell us what's ministering to you. And remember, share the word of the Lord, share your faith with somebody that you know. God bless you and stay tuned for more. Thank you for joining us today. The Lord bless you. Many people ask us, how can we give and how can we be involved? Go online, whcc.net, and you will find ways to give, and you will be blessed in the giving, and we thank you for your thoughtfulness and prayer. You can send a check by mail to 1780 Cumberland Avenue, West Lafayette, 47906, Attention Whitehorse Christian Center, or by phone. You can call the office, 765-477-1111. We're here to help you. Or if you're local, you can come by in person and drop it off and we would enjoy seeing you. We wanna thank you for your faithful stewardship and all you've done so well with what God has put in your hands. Your giving helps us to maintain, sustain, and continue for generation after generation the vision that God has put in our heart. As you give, remember that you share in our mission and our mission statement of reaching the nations, of feeding and providing food for friends, and much more. Thanks for all you do. Enjoy the word, enjoy worship, Enjoy the service, and may God touch your heart. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us tonight. And wonderful time of worship. And we appreciate you and sure are glad that you are taking, participating and taking part of our virtual online services. May the Lord richly bless you. We ask Holy Spirit to come and just minister each and every one of us right now. We get to watch a few videos as we worship from home and the kids are drawing, the youth are drawing, we have a video we'd like to show you. And also be reminded, paint your rock, get a vision and a scripture. Be sure to place it out here by the sign. One day we're going to have a new sign. And one day what you're believing God for, that God has confirmed based on the word of God, is going to come to pass in your life. Let's enjoy these videos. God bless you. Hello, church family. Pastor Eric here. want to jump online today. Thank you so much for joining us for our special presentation today. 
of our Wednesday virtual service. We're so glad that you're here. I wanted to go through one more time and uh, give that special announcement for our service on the 3rd of January, the first Sunday of the year. We're very excited. Um, and several of you have already sent in a testimony, but those of you who have not had a chance to send them in, there's still lots of time. So again, we're answering two questions. The first one is, um, what are some of the good things, some of the positive experiences that you've had in 2020? What is a skill set, something new that you've learned, something new that you've grown in? Um, one thing that I really started doing a lot more frequently, I've always had this, but I'm, I'm kind of getting more into it, is uh, doing fires with my kids. So I've looked into uh, cutting wood, cutting down trees, type of uh, axes and, and wood splitters that you use. It's been kind of fun, lots of fun learning new skills. And then another question that we're answering is, what are you looking forward to in 2021? So the deadline to turn in these videos is uh, December 29th by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can call the office. Uh, if you have questions on how to submit them, you can email us a download link. Uh, if the video is under two minutes, you can text it and it'll come through just fine. Please call the office if you have any questions. Really, really want to encourage you, especially those young adults that have a phone uh, and you can film it from wherever you, wherever you are. It can be on your car on the go or maybe um, out in your house or out in the woods. Um, I was going to say snow, but we don't have snow anymore. Hopefully we'll get some more soon. But uh, we want to really, really hear from you. What are some positive experiences you've had this year? What new things have you learned? How have you grown? And also what miracles God has uh, done in your life here this year? And the last one is, um, what is something you're looking forward to in 2021? Thank you so much for your time. God bless you, and we will see you soon. All right, now a few announcements. No in-person services until January 17th. So we can look forward to coming back after the holidays on the 17th. The school systems here in our community have shut down until January 19th. And so we'll start back right before they do. And we're looking forward to seeing you. Thank you for participating. Thank you for being supportive. Thank you for being encouraging and involved. Some of our church family have had COVID and healed. Some have COVID and other types of sickness. But God is strengthening. God is healing. And we've seen a lot of miracles. And we're believing God for miracles. Be safe, be wise, and enjoy the holidays. And just a reminder that offices are closed tomorrow, Thursday, Christmas Eve, and Friday, Christmas Day. If you have an emergency, though, call the church. We have a call forwarding service, and they will track down a pastor. So thank you uh, for calling and keeping in touch, and we want to be here to minister to you if you have a crisis. Sunday worship, service 1227 at 10 o'clock, and a bilingual service at 6 o'clock. Monday night, the 28th. We do not have prayer, so we will take some time to enjoy the holidays, enjoy our families, and be blessed. Everybody said, amen. I want to remind you, you can still watch the Christmas program that we showed last Sunday night on the 20th. A lot of people viewed, and from all over, lots of comments, and people really enjoyed it, and several have texted me. They've watched it several times. So invite people to watch and join Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. You have an opportunity to share Christ and share the message and watch the presentation. It was phenomenal. Special thanks to all those who did all that ministry years ago and to the media team and all involved with creating a great program for us to watch. Taking communion together was fun. Lighting candles together was fun. And so you be blessed. Okay, now... We want to share the word tonight. Pastor Bobby's going to go first, and I'm going to follow him. So get your notebooks ready. Get your pen and paper ready. All your children, draw some pictures, make some notes, and youth as well. God bless you as we listen now to Pastor Bobby. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. We serve an awesome God. This is truly a day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad of it. Why? Because we're living in it and have an expectation on what God will do. I thank God for today. And Lord, we just give you praise, honor, and glory. We submit this time to the working of the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth that liberate us. We appropriate the blood. And thank you for your angels on assignment over us and protecting us as well. And Pastor Jeff wanted me to speak a little bit just before he speaks today. And he wanted me to speak about passion and zeal. 
about the heart. He gave me some scriptures. <laughs> it took me twice to do, get it right, but praise the Lord. The second time is always better. <laughs> and so forth. He said, we'll do that other one another time. But this one's about passion. You know, there's a time that through COVID and the things we went through, it requires passion. First scripture talks about Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So wherever your treasure is, that desire, that want, that passion, so will your heart be. Treasure, the place in which good and precious things are collected and laid up. You know, I realized that in my life, there was three major areas I succeeded in. One was bowling when I was about eighth grade to ninth grade. I averaged somewhere between about 180, 190 a game. And it was normal. They thought for sure I would probably go pro in bowling, and I chose not to. Then I played football, <laughs> praise the Lord. And the main thing was the fact, you know, you learn a lot. As a young boy, I had certain chores I had to do. The one I hated the most was the 6 a.m. Saturday, which I had to get up and cut the grass every morning. And my father made sure if he didn't wake me up by the dog, he put cold water on me to make sure I got up. But I learned the lesson to get up and get busy. There were certain disciplines he put in me. But bowling began to teach me the art, the study, the passion. I wanted to win, won many times for the state of Texas and so forth. And bowled many games. I think the highest I bowled was 289. I bowled many of them, but I never made 300. I usually got nervous or something in the last ball. But anyway, it was bowling in my heart first. Then football came along. My father put me in that. That was interesting because, <laughs> praise the Lord, I was big, I was strong, I was able to play. But as I began to play, I started to realize that uh, my natural strength was way beyond what it's supposed to be. Uh, I was breaking people's bones constantly. And I wasn't mad and I wasn't hitting them hard. I just hit them. <laughs> One day, I think I took out three bones, three people. And I hit a person in his chin, chin right there in the front, cracked it, he fell over. My best friend, who never lets me forget about it, I stuck him in his arm, and the bone went straight through. I went to another person. <laughs> so I was breaking a lot of bones. And in the process, I would, I would play. You know, they had the defenses pulled, and they come around the end. I would just stand there and let the backs hit me, and I would just throw them off like they're nothing. And, I, and the coach would get mad at me and be upset because I'd be laughing at them because they couldn't move me. And so this last time, this last one we did, this one really affected me. One of the older seniors, I was only like a sophomore, uh, he had messed up, and so coach put him in the center. And when he called your name, you were to run full speed and hit him and hit him, and hit him, and hit him, and hit him. Well, he was still standing, and he said, Kirkley, everything in me didn't want to hit him, but if I didn't hit him, I would be in the center. And I hit him so hard, my God, wow. I knocked that boy straight out. He was done. And after that, I didn't like the psychology of the game in the sense of, I knew eventually I would have to move into a state to not be afraid to destroy somebody completely. And I decided then to say, I'm going to try basketball. So I went into basketball, and it was, it was a, a great passion for me. My father didn't like it at first, but later on he began to like it. <laughs> I, I began to look up this word passion as Pastor was talking to me. Passion is a feeling of intense enthusiasm towards or compelling desire for someone or something. Passion can range from eager interest in a, or admiration for an idea, proposal, or cause to enthusiastically an enjoyment of an interest or activity. Basketball became the thing I began to strive on. I stopped everything else that I was playing, but my football also came to an end in basketball because my coaches could not agree. My basketball coach only want me to play basketball, and my football coach only want me to play football. And so they put, them, they put it to me in that fashion that you had to choose, and I chose basketball because I really felt like that was what I really wanted to do, and my passion was for that. 
I didn't like all the cold and all that stuff, being out there freezing, your fingers just breaking up. But yet and still, I still chose that over everything else. You know, I worked hard. I worked in the rain, the dark, the cold, the night. I practiced in all these different areas. I practiced with three against one, two against one. I even had people purposely foul me when I shoot and me to shoot over them. And I would shoot the ball. I practiced hard to be the best. But in this, there was a passion to be the best I could be. I wasn't in competition with nobody but myself. I wanted to achieve the highest goal I could go under my circumstances and be the very best I could be. And I strive for it. Another definition of passions are, passions are areas, topics, or activities that excite you and interest you. They are, necess they are not necessarily work. You know, when you move into passion, it's not no more work. What I was doing was not work for me. It was a heart desire to achieve something, and this was the vehicle in which I could reach that desire. So the hard nights, the long nights, when we get done practice, I would still go out and run steps. I would shoot so many times a day. I didn't just want to be mediocre. I wanted to be the very best I could be there. Probably in my junior year, senior year, junior year, I averaged 29, senior year, I averaged 39 in high school. In, in um, college, I ended up my last year 31.7. Every about 10 rebounds a game. I got about five assists a game. So there was a lot that was happening that I really strived for it. I wanted to be the best. I had the passion. You could find, define passion as focused desire. I had a focused desire to be the best I could be in the sport I was in. And I figured that would be my destiny and that would be my purpose in life. I didn't know the Lord then. And then one day I met him and everything changed. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but one, one thing that stuck out to me was Proverbs 4, 25 through 26. I realized that anything you do, you got to have passion. You got to have that desire in your heart to be whatever you want to be. It even strives and pushes me even now as I walk through these times. This is what it says in Proverbs 4, 25 through 26. Let that eye look right on, focus. And let that eyelids look straight before thee, focus. Ponder the paths of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. As I said once before, all my life in playing basketball, I always was the one that took the last shot. I only remember missing two shots ever. And the one shot I missed, I should have made, I just froze up. It wasn't because of the person played great defense. And the other one I missed, I got the ball back and put it back in. But I've won many a games because of this, but I was focused. Focus is important in this time. Who you looking at and what you looking at is very important. In these years, I was focused mainly on myself and being whatever I want to be. But my passion was that I got to be the best I can be to do what I have to do. Passion gives you a reason to keep learning and to keep working toward magistry. It's very important. Your passion helps you move toward these things. It gives you purpose. The reason why you'll get up early in the morning and go running. The reason why, like sometime in Texas, you know, at midday, it's like 108 straight heat. I would get a wetsuit and go running at midday. <clears throat> because I was seeking to do something. My, I would be so wet, it'd be just running off, off of me like a flood. But I was seeking something. I would ride from the base all the way home. I would do things that would help strengthen me to get me ready. But it wasn't work for me. It wasn't work. It was a passion. It was desire. And many of us have passions. Passions give us like a reason to keep learning. I kept learning. I kept knowing. When you feel that passion, you feel a pull to make it happen true. That pull feeds persistence and that persistence guide, that persistence guides you. Somewhere I missed the paper. <laughs> God buys you. It helps you. It pushes you on. So it's so important. Persistence means, persistence is the ability to stick with something. It get, passion gives you persistence. This is what I want. This is what I'm achieving. This is what I'm going after. Then also it gives you perseverance. All these were things I learned through sports my father, and it began to affect me even in today. Perseverance is a very important character trait for you to be successful in life. 
It means determination at working hard. Listen to this, regardless of, the, of any odds or obstacles that may exist. This is what perseverance does. You come against the obstacles. Today we're facing many obstacles. We're facing many things that are facing us, but we must persevere even beyond those obstacles. It is to insist and to be firm on getting something done and not giving up. This is preservation, excuse me. And this is what I had in my, inside of me. It was developed over the years. All these things I learned by being in sports. I gave over, but finally I gave over to the seeking of God. And these attributes were carried with me. When I got saved, I went after him 100%. I was hungry. I found what I need to find, books I need to know, asked the questions, took notes all the time. I was passionate, but my passion turned in what I call zeal. When you use as nouns passion, passion means any great, strong, powerful emotion, which I have for the sports and different things I did, whereas zeal means the fever, the fever or the tiredness devotion for a person or a cause. My passion turned to a zeal toward Christ. I began to have a cause. I began to have a purpose that's been designed by God, and it became a zeal. But it was built off of a passion first that was already built in me. A determination in its furtherance. I had a very great determination in God for his furtherance in people's lives. One thing I strive for, and I still do today, I never liked lies. I've always hated lies. So I'll never support a lie. You can't sing a lie to me, I'll shut your mouth. I said, you can't talk a lot to me, I'll shut your mouth. I do not like it at all. I've always been like this. Ever since I can remember, praise the Lord, <laughs> hallelujah. I was upset when they told me there was no a tooth fairy. I said, why'd you lie to me? I said, Jesus, I said, even though I got some, it still didn't make a difference. But you realize passion and zeal are different. Passions are that powerful, great, strong emotion. Zeal means I'm focused on someone, I'm focused on him, and that became my focus. Zeal, another definition, zeal, if you have zeal, you're willing, energized, and motivated. Zeal is often used in religious sense, meaning devotion to God, and this is key. When God shifts my passion to a zeal, it became a focus into God. And now all of a sudden, the foundation of what I was made of, all the things I went through, through sports and training, began to develop something in me that was really powerful. It says here, I press the tireless devotion for a person or a call. This is zeal. My cause was Jesus Christ, his truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life or idea. I press toward the mark. I learned some things especially when I went down May 1st, 2017, and went into the hospital. At that time, when I went, <laughs> I never would expect to be in the hospital for two months. But during those months, I learned how to be, and you have nothing you can do, but there was a zeal in me, a zeal for Christ even when I was down, to make sure that my room was have the presence of God in it, that he was involved with me in everything I did, so much so the nurses would come to my room late at night and stand in my room because they said there was a great peace in there because I cultivated his presence in my room as well. I made sure, I pressed toward, what am I saying today? I'm saying I don't care about COVID, I don't care about other things in the sense I respect it for what it is and what it can do to you. But no matter what the condition that may have locked me down, I pressed toward the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. I reach for him all the time. And even now in this season is the greatest moment because you don't know what's gonna happen next after this. You don't really know what God is preparing you for. This is why so much it's so important to have passion toward the Lord and have a zeal toward him because it don't matter where he puts you. You're gonna pick up your Bible. You're gonna begin to study. You're gonna begin to pray. You can be doing those things that you need to do. Philippians 3, 14 and 15 says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, have this mind. I press toward him. 
I had to forget those things were behind me. Verse 13 in the same chapter, what I gain, I count loss. In other words, all that that I gain, reputation, all the things, recognition, I count loss to apprehend Christ. So no matter what place you find yourself even in today, you must realize this is very important for all of us to press toward. COVID may have locked you down from certain things, but it is not keeping you away from God Almighty, your relationship with him, the continual relationship. Even during this Christmas time, when people are celebrating this time, we get so caught up in the, what do you want to call it, uh, everything else but Christ, and we get distracted, we get confused when the real purpose is for him to be exalt, exalted and lifted up. We must have the focus of Christ no matter what, and we must press and we must have a hunger. So what they may shut down this, so what they may open this, so much this, but Christ and heaven has not shut down. It is still open even now. It says here in Philippians 3, 7 through 8, but what things were gained were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. My passion is strong. My passion, desire is great for him. And I say this over and over. It prepares you. Everything I went through prepared me for this time. I want to encourage you at this time to stay focused. Keep your attention where it's supposed to be. Be focused on him. Let him be what he needs to be in you. It's a time to get Christ focused, not to just get holidays, time for families, time for loved ones, but let Christ be exalted in the midst. It's a time when COVID is coming and decisions have to be made. You're locking down. Apostle Paul was locked down in houses. Uh, Jeremiah was locked down in, in, in a place you didn't want to be locked down in in the first place. But you can find places where people were locked in, but it didn't matter. Elijah was locked in as well. So I just want to encourage you today, Take on the passions of God, take on the zeal of God, get focused on God, and let him be exalted. God bless you. All right, praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Bobby. Having passion for this hour at this time. What a message. I also want to take just a moment to say hello to some of you that have been quarantined or some of you that have been home for several months, generally some of the older members of our church. Hello to Tom and Bill Marr, to Donald and Linda McEdwards. Mc Cecil and Judy Murray, greetings, praise the Lord. We know you're down at Indy now. Mike and Kathy Needham, so nice of you to call Jane, Sister Kathy, and sing those scriptures to her. The Lord bless you in your ministry. And hello to Laddie and Christine Woodcock. Y'all listen, well, you'll hear your name eventually. We read several last Sunday and last Wednesday, and we enjoy saying hello. We look forward to seeing you. All right, let's pray. Let's take our Bibles. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and minister to us today and to be our teacher. We want to learn, we want to grow, and we want to honor you in all that we say and all that we do and become more like Christ every day. And all church said, amen. Well, this week as I was praying and seeking the Lord, I uh, perceived the Lord would have me speak along the line of passion. And so the title of my message is Spiritual Passion. I called Pastor Bobby, texted him, and asked him if he would share along those lines, and we could work together. So we bring you a joint message today, and we always enjoy working together. I appreciate all the pastors, appreciate Pastor Bobby and his passion, his zeal for the Lord, and how far this man has come. Let's go to a text. First of all, I have several that I'm going to quote. Some I will read, some I won't. So as the children and the youth are listening, take time to write them all down. And look up the ones that I only made reference to, and you will be blessed. Colossians 3, 23, which is a text that I really enjoy. Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not as unto men. So Matthew chapter 25 works with Colossians 3 really well. That all that we do to others, towards others, is actually serving and ministering to the Lord Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. Matthew 6, putting God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all the things that we have need of, mentioned before that, they'll be added unto us. Philippians chapter 3, 7 through 8. Praise the Lord. A text very important to Bobby and part of his foundational life. 
where we're wanting to know about the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2, verse 14 actually tells us that Christ was zealous, active, devoted, diligent, enthusiastic. Now, when we talk about passion, we want to speak about passion in a positive sense. So when you go to the Word, you can look at passion in a negative sense, but also a positive sense. And we want to stay on the positive side. When I had the opportunity of attending Purdue for my master's, it took me five years. I taught those five years. And I taught several classes, and one that I designed and taught was on leadership. And I used to train people to be managers and to work in camps. Camps for kids, camps for adults, etc. Camps for a mixture. And I would try to teach my students, because a lot of times uh, people that go into management, particularly in the area of recreation, they may have a more limited budget. And a lot of times we think, well, I can't do much if I don't have a lot of money. And I would, I would try to teach my students that, that you don't need money as much as you need passion. You need enthusiasm. You need to be active and devoted, delighted, zealous for what you're doing and the programs you're offering and what you have to give to the kids. And I told him, passion, if I had my choice to hire someone that has passion or someone that uh, has a, a lot of money, I would rather have passion any day of the week because you can really do something with passion. Passion is, it, it catches on, it spreads and is contagious. So I set up an example with my classes and I said, okay, <clears throat> this class is going to have a camp for 12 hours with 135 kids. This class is going to have a camp for 12 hours, 135 kids. And then kids are going to fill out a survey before and after. This group is going to use a mega multi-million dollar camp. And this group is going to have almost no budget and virtually no, a camp with virtually nothing to offer except nature itself. Now, at the end of that survey, and I was trying to teach the importance of passion and being enthusiastic and zealous and in the beginning, I, you know, the, the student didn't really believe me. But at the end, they began to see, my goodness, this isn't about money. This is about having a heart. This is about being enthusiastic. This is about caring about what you're doing and being involved. Absolutely. Almost 100% of all the kids where there was a lot of passion, that's where they wanted to be. And it was very successful. And that camp, believe it or not, they had horrible rain. <laughs> it rained all day. And they still adapted with passion. And I was teaching them about passion and being enthusiastic and being zealous and caring about what you're doing. And that's what we're talking about here in terms of spiritual passion. All right. We don't want to confuse as believers the type of passion God wants us to have, the type of passion Jesus had, which is, again, zealous, active, devoted, diligent, enthusiastic. We don't want to confuse that with sinful passion, which is mentioned 27 times in Scripture. And no doubt Pastor Bobby mentioned along that line, where we're pursuing things of the flesh, pursuing things related to carnality, Philippians 3, verse 6. We don't pursue the things of of the flesh and lust of the flesh, etc. We want to avoid those things, but we want to be excited, enthusiastic, and zealous about the Lord Jesus Christ and about what God has done in our lives and what God is doing in our lives. Praise the Lord. We don't want to have passion about things that are insignificant. And what's insignificant in terms of eternity? The things of God. There are a lot of people right now distracted from the things of God, from uh, sharing the gospel, from prayer, from worship, to winning people to Christ, etc., and uh, paying attention to the wrong things. A lot of people operating under deception and delusion. So let's not be distracted by things that are insignificant or passionate about things that are insignificant in comparison to the things of God. And they're all, all of us have things we like to do, things we're interested in. Now, there are a lot of things I enjoy doing. I like to camp. I like to ride my bicycle. I like to ride my motorcycle. 
I like to shoot my firearm. I like to spend time with the grandkids. And a lot of those things I have, I'm enthusiastic about. And I enjoy doing it. And uh, try to stay very optimistic and very positive. But we would have to all ask ourselves, are we more passionate about something in life than we are God? And we want to avoid that. And we have to search our own heart. Even when we take communion, Lord, has something replaced my passion for you, my zeal for you? Do I want to live every day, Colossians 3.23, that what I'm doing is, is as unto you? And, and so we're asking Holy Spirit to help us with that during this holiday season. And you young adults, you're going to have some real opportunity to share and reflect and look back and work with Pastor Eric and Pastor Isaac on the first Sunday of next year, 2021. I believe it's January the 3rd. What are some things you've learned through this year? What are some skills you've developed? What are some positive experiences you've had? We don't want to look back at any time in our life. Well, that was a horrible year. That was a terrible time. No, we want to give thanks in everything and find God in it and stay passionate about the things of the Lord. All right. So help us, Holy Spirit, to have a deep sense of love, of excitement, of enthusiasm about the Lord. A few years ago, I think it was two or three years ago, I had the opportunity to minister at a fellowship of ministers, pastors in Canada. And I was asked to be a keynote speaker. It was an honor. And I looked forward to going. And a lot of them were my age and older, although there were younger ones there as well. And some of them were quite senior. Some of them have been ministering a long time. I ministered, I think, three times a day for three days, Pastor Bobby. And on the last night, <coughs> excuse me, on the last night as we were finished at the altar and finished ministering a wonderful presence for the Lord, some of those older men came to me and they had been uh, passionate about the Lord. They had carried revival. They had welcomed Holy Spirit. They'd preached in, you know, all over the world and helped lead and build churches. Wonderful men and women of God, but quite elderly. And so their role had changed and they were more one-on-one, -on -one, more encouraging and more prayer warriors and teachers than they were necessarily public speakers. But several of them came to me and some a little younger were still pastoring. They said to me something along this lines, man, pastor, we sure appreciate your passion, your enthusiasm. And every time you open up your Bible, it, it, like it was alive and fresh, and, and it is, of course, and they knew that. But they were encouraged to go back, and God sparked something in them. That's what happens when we're passionate. It can be pouring down rain. We can have 135 kids with no facilities and nothing to do. What did we do? We got a shovel, several of them. And we got a great big hay rope from a farmer, and we dug a hole and filled it with water and had a tug of war. Oh, man, those kids had a blast. Kids are interested in having fun. Wouldn't you say that's right, Mr. Lappin? And they're interested in uh, food. So they got all kinds of food. I'm not saying necessarily, Pastor Eric, it was nutritional. But, oh, man, did they enjoy that Mountain Dew and Reese's Cups and Snicker bars <laughs> and hot dogs. Praise the Lord. Hot chocolate, they had a blast. <laughs> yeah, it was summertime, but the temperature was warm. But when it rains all day and you've been tug of war and get drugged through a water hole, well, some of you might be thinking, I'm not sure I could be passionate about that. Well, you might be surprised. There's a little competition in all of us, and it was very good. What's my walk like with the Lord? That, that's a question for all of us. You look at Revelation 2, verse 5. Am I cold? Am I lukewarm? Am I hot? We all know lukewarm and cold get spewed out. Praise the Lord. I meant to show you some pictures today, and I forgot. But maybe we'll have a chance to capture some later. Or you watch <coughs> the videos that the media team are putting together. You think of a child. Now, we have three relatively new grandchildren. And they happen to all be boys. One is going on two in April. One of them just turned one. 
and one of them is only a few weeks old. So we don't get to see one of them very often. He lives about three hours away. We don't get to see the other two, which are relatively close, very often, but some because of COVID and trying to take good care of Jane while she's in uh, this condition. We have to really protect her health. And the Lord has blessed her and she's doing well. But they'll send us videos of the kids uh, riding a new little bike type thing, trying to walk. And the one that's about a year and nine months old, they sent me a video of him the other day. Great big eyes. What was he doing? Baking cookies. He was at the table with his mom with, with the dough and the cookie cutters and the flour everywhere. <clears throat> and the first thing he did was fill his hands with flour and douse himself in it. With a great big smile and rosy cheeks and great big eyes. Now, how many of you know that's passion in cookie baking? When you watch children, you see passion. You see enthusiasm. They want to learn. They want to do something new. And so, <laughs> well, let's bake some cookies and just get flour everywhere. At the close of all the pictures, as we corresponded, my daughter said, oh, the kitchen's a mess, but she said it was totally worth it. Yeah, it was totally worth it because those children had passion. They were enthusiastic. They're, they were learning to be creative. They were learning to uh, and excited <clears throat> to be doing new things. All right. I would ask you a few questions today, young and old alike, especially the children and the youth, middle school, high school, even our young adults. Excuse me. How will people remember you? We could ask this question. How will people remember me? Here's another question. What was I most enthusiastic about? What would my coworkers, my neighbors, my family, if I were to leave and never see them again, to go home and be with the Lord or something, what would they say about me? What was he enthusiastic about? What a shame to live a life and be more enthusiastic about things than we are God. That's a tragedy, folks. So, to go, to, the, to go the long haul, which we know in this season, we need to have a vision for the marathon, for the long race. Remember Jan Kirkhoff, Pastor Eric mentioning, ministering to us along this line? If I'm going to go the long distance, I have to pay attention to passion. I have to make sure that I stay zealous, enthusiastic. I think last Sunday I mentioned when I came to minister that about the greatest gift of all, given by the greatest giver of all, the Father giving us salvation through His only begotten Son. I think I mentioned that I'm so excited to come to church that morning. And uh, we have a wonderful media team here, but I like to come on the day of the service, maybe even the time of the service, as close to that service being presented as I can, because things change all day, every day, all day long. And I like to be current. I mentioned last Sunday, I couldn't wait to get here, even though, well, there might only be 10 or 13 of us in a whole building spread out, making a virtual service available. Well, I was serious. I couldn't wait to get here. I was so glad to see Pastor Bobby and Martha and Pastor Tracy and Pastor Gary was here and Pastor Eric. And I think Pastor Jana was here last Sunday. No, she was with grandchildren, but oh, we had a wonderful time. Praise the Lord. Passion, zeal, enthusiasm is connected to our heart. He'll never get away from that. And passion helps propel us. It's, it's, uh, it's like fuel in a car. Search your heart. Search your motives. Do right, avoid wrong, and serve God. Passion is not about money or receiving glory and recognition or being prestigious, or having an easy life. Passion is related to a love for God, a love for the Word, a love for the lost, a love for the body of Christ. And when we have those things, passion stays alive, passion stays fresh. And of course, whatever we lack, what do we do? We ask, and what happens? The Lord provides. Let's say it together, good and loud now. The Lord provides. So you have a couple of questions. What would people say about me? What would they remember me by? 
what would they say I'm passionate about? All right. Don't let your passion for God ever grow cold. So I just wrote down five things here, and I have some scriptures that I'll refer to it so you can look those up later. How do I sustain passion? How do I get it? How do I keep it? Well, first of all, you're going to get passion because you know God. You're born again. You're saved. He rescued you from something and gave you eternal life. I've been saved now for 50 years and, uh, and a half. And I think I've had passion for God from day one. So here's five things that can help you with passion. And there are no doubt many, many others. But number one, all right, take all habits of sin. You see something that you do that's contrary to what the Bible says, go like this. Throw it away. Repent and ask God to help you. Get rid of it. If it's not from God, get rid of it. Because if you see in the Word the sin of the Lord, and you keep doing it, you're going to lose your passion. You're going to lose your fire. You're going to find yourself in a mess. Throw it away and ask God for grace. Number two, examine your own life. What's more important than God? Is it a sin to golf? No. To go boating? No. Hunting? No. Shopping? Well, generally not. No, of course not. None of those things in themselves are a sin unless they replace God. Unless you get more passion for that. The first thing you know, you're not even in church. You're not even reading the Word. You're not worshiping anymore. You, whoa. Something's happened to our passion. Something's happened to our zeal. Something needs to change. Number three, keep your thoughts pure, Matthew 5, 8. Keep your attitude correct. It's still number three, if you're Ephesians 4, 23. Uh, number four, make sure your motives are holy, 1 Peter 1, 6. Why do I want to do this? What's my motive in doing this? Uh, number five, keep my conscience clean, Acts 23, verse 1. Have a pure conscience. And number six, don't quench the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. You just practice those six things, and the next thing you know, you will be blessed. Your passion will stay alive. Don't let anyone steal your love, your joy, your enthusiasm, or your passion. So during this season, literally a December 22nd, 2020, during this season, there's more natural darkness than any other time of the year. And so daylight hours all over are less now than they will be tomorrow for the next six months. So in a time of natural darkness, what did the Lord call us to be? Light. We're called to be a light. So let's be passionate about being a light. Everybody said, amen. All right. Now, Pastor Eric told me in the beginning I had 20 minutes. He said I could take it a little longer, though. And, he, and then he said, no, actually, you can take as long as you want. So I'm approaching 20 minutes, and we know that if you're live streaming, that's pretty long. We try to keep it an hour because of attention span and watching the screen and how things work. So I'm trying to wind down here. And at this time, if we were together, what would I do? Have the worship team come up and rescue you. But I wouldn't preach so long if y'all weren't so hungry. So I'm not taking responsibility. You're the one that draw on the anointing. Now, we don't want you to get shortchanged. We want you to have a good meal. Share Christ to the ends of the earth, all throughout the world, Mark 16, 15. Take the path of the greatest pursuit, and that is to seek and save the lost. Be responsible with all your other responsibilities, but share Christ. In a George Gallup survey, I don't know, I may not have said that right. In a George something Gallup survey, okay, surveyed 130,000 people all over the world in 130 different nations, Pastor Bobby, and they asked him this question. What would need to happen for you to go back to church? So they asked people that used to go to church that don't go anymore. What would need to happen for you to return to church? How many of you would like to hear the answer? 
Tune in next Wednesday at 7 o'clock, and we will give it to you. Uh, sorry, I've tried to create a little curiosity so you don't turn me off. All right, the answer is, believe this. I would go back to church, number one, 13,000 people in 130 nations. If I saw passion in leaders, if I saw passion in the church members, enthusiasm, zeal, hello? <clears throat> Pastor Bobby was an amazing athlete, still is. At, when he played in college, and he could have gone to the pros, and many of the people he played against did, and he's in the Hall of Fame at his school, was honored there. And he could have gone to the pros, except God called him to walk away from that and serve him in the ministry. And Bobby responded to that. And uh, I just played ball in high school, but I had a lot of fun and I was passionate about it. And I was talking to Bobby that I never saw an athlete in track, football, basketball, where I played in all those sports, all through junior high and high school. And I'm glad my parents let me do it. I never saw anyone successful didn't have passion. No, I never saw it. And you could tell when you went to practice, first day, oh, they'll start, they'll start, they'll start. They're going to be a contribution <clears throat> just on passion. You could tell they may be second string or third string. They're going to help the team. They're going to help us in the starting five or whoever the starting five is or starting 11, depends on what game you're playing. They're going to help us be better because they're enthusiastic and passionate about practice. They got some zeal here. They're going to challenge us to do the best we can. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Passion. What would make you go back to church if I saw some passion in some leaders? What did I start out with trying to teach my students on leadership? You don't have to have money. You need passion. You need a heart. You have a heart. Whatever you're leading is going to grow. Hello? So I said, Pastor Bobby, minister on passion a little bit. You probably don't know this about Pastor Bobby. He was an incredible shooter. How many points do you average a game? 31. Amazing. What was your highest scored game? 50. <laughs> I scored 50 once in five games. Meaning 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Bobby used to shoot the basketball at night in the dark. He practiced at night in the dark, Eric. What's that? That's the ball hitting the bottom of the net. The bottom makes an awesome sound. Swish. We call it a swish. All right, moving right along. Passion in the lives of leaders and passion in the lives of members? Well, it's God that offers abundant life, John 10, 10. And everybody said, amen. I don't know anybody. I was thinking about this today. I don't know anybody that would prefer cold pizza to warm pizza or cold coffee to warm coffee. Now, I've never tasted coffee. I was with some men the other day, and we were working on the job, and they got coffee cups sitting around. They'd been drinking some coffee. They'd been working hard. And uh, I noticed the coffee was sitting there. The cups were maybe half or only a third full. And I said, hey, your coffee's still here. You know what they all said, different ones? They said, well, I don't want that anymore. It's cold. What's the Lord looking for? Cold, lukewarm, or what? Hot. <laughs> you drink your coffee hot, and that's the way God wants you. Now, I want to tell you a true story. It's kind of a sad story, but in the end, it's good, and I want to try to close. It's a true story about a woman who lived in poverty who earned a living barely with her hands knitting and selling her product. Life got very hard for her suddenly as a young teenager. Now, 42 years later, her hands are almost crippled and still she's trying to knit to make a living and it's, she's struggling. It's kind of a sad picture, but it gets more sad. And one day, some some old friends that had been friends with the family decided, I wonder where she is. I wonder what she's doing. We haven't seen her in 42 years. They found her and they were shocked. 
Why do you live like this? Why do you live in such poverty? Well, you know, my parents died and I supported myself now for 42 years. And I ask her this question. Don't you know you're worth a fortune? She said, what do you mean I'm worth a fortune? She said, you are worth a fortune. They went to see her family attorneys. And the attorneys discovered there's been a horrible mistake made for 42 years. 42 years ago, you inherited a trust with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And now it has turned into mega millions. You are a mega millionaire. Crippled, living in poverty, still trying to knit to make a living. Many today, many Christians today live defeated, live depressed, live in spiritual poverty. And we can say to them, once we've come to know Christ, don't you know that you are wealthy? Don't you know you have an inheritance? Don't you know about the riches in Christ? The love God has for you? Revelation 3.19, be zealous, therefore, and repent. And let's have a passion for God and grab a hold of the riches that God has made available for us through Christ Jesus. We started out with the title, Spiritual Passion, building after Pastor Bobby had ministered on, having passion for this hour and this time. Would you say this with me? Passion rubs off. Passion rubs off. One time we were, years ago, several decades, we were going to put rafters on a person's house, two stories. And this couple had worked diligently and hard to build this house, and they needed help with the rafters. Money was tight. Things had to be managed wisely to get the project done. And I said, well, we'll show up and we'll put the rafters on for you. It, if I remember right, and I believe this is accurate, the wind chill was 50 below. It was... I may be wrong, it may not have been that much, but I'm telling you, it was cold. And when I got there, I pulled up, and all the men in the church that were going to help were there, <clears throat> qualified, gifted men to do the job, and I was kind of site leader, I guess, although many were more knowledgeable and ex more experienced than me. They were all bundled up, and we're going to work on a roof, 50 below, setting rafters. And they had a barrel going, if I remember, with a fire in it, Jordan. And I knew right then, Micah, nobody wants to put rafters on the roof. This is what I did literally. I got out of my car, my vehicle, started taking my jackets off and laid them on the ground. So when I got there, all I had left, all the top layers were gone. All I had left was the lower layer and the sweatshirt and my hat. I started right up that ladder to the second story. I have you know, Mr. Lappin, by the end of the day, all the rafters are up, nailed, and secured. Say it with me. Passion is contagious. You know what those men did, Bobby? Peeled off those the top layers so we could be flexible and do our job, and we went to work and created our own heat. And that family provided food for us. We went in at 8 at noon and warmed up and went right back to work. Your passion for the things of God will touch a life. <laughs> we have so much to be thankful for. Lead your team. Be excited. Whether it's raining out, snowing out, hot, muddy, perfect conditions, worst conditions. Enjoy the event and give glory to God. I pray the Lord would just cause us to be filled with his love and that our passion would be burning for God. That we would influence others to recognize the riches they can have in Christ Jesus. 
And with that, we ask Holy Spirit to seal these words today in our heart. Thanks for being with us. God bless you. Stay tuned for further instructions. Have a happy holiday. Thank you for listening and being a part of our service today. Just a reminder, as I was closing, sometimes it's easy to miss the instructions. But we're going to take time to give now and to pray with one another. Gather your family together now and pray together. As we have closed, we are praying together and you can pray together as well. Tithe your local church and send a note to your elders and your pastors and thank them for all they do. If you want to give an offering or a gift at Whitehorse, you can go to whcc.net and see a lot of different options. We are grateful for your involvement, for being a part of our worship service. We look forward to meeting you and being with you again one day. You make a difference. Your sharing makes a difference. Invite people to join you because as we invite people to join us, we're sharing the gospel with more and more people in our community. It's a great tool for reaching lives right now. God bless you. Thanks for all you do. See you again. Of my king, rocking his hobby beckoning. Cause in my darkness, he has set me free. And now I hear the spirit calling me. He's calling, wake up, child. It's your time. Such a time as this, he's calling, wake up, child, it's your time to shine. You were born for such a time as this, such a time as this. Thank you for joining us today. 
You being here makes a difference. We hope that you have been touched and blessed deeply by the Lord and that you will go forth with the fruit of the Spirit and minister the life of Christ. Remember to like and share. Join us through the week for daily bread. We hope to see you in the near future. Thank you. God bless you.